Hi, it's Dwyer. It is April 21st, 2024. The day after Ryan Garcia's victory over Devin Haney. Let's talk about that fight. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's make a few points here. You know, first, understand, life is unfair, right? I mean that. Understand, Ryan Garcia is one of those rare box office kings in the sport, right? Think of Anthony Joshua. Think of Canelo, right? From my seat, he's actually better off not being tied up with fighting for a title or the right to fight for a title. He's actually better off since the crowd follows him and not the title. He's actually better off, like Gervonta Davis, picking and choosing who he fights. That gives him broad latitude. Understand, he comes into this fight three pounds over the 140 limit. Now, there are people he can beat at 147. Understand, if he stays at 143, which isn't a weight class, it's his weight, right? That might be enticing to champs at 140 like Teofimo Lopez, who might want the big payday of fighting against Ryan Garcia. And understand, Lopez from New York City, right? Raised in New York City. And this fight with a huge crowd, I have no doubt the pay-per-view is going to be impressive. This fight was in New York City. So you can imagine Teofimo against Ryan Garcia in New York City. That would fill a lot of seats. More importantly, it would be a free swing by Teofimo Lopez because his title at 140 would not be at risk. Right? Understand, people are going to follow box office kings. Anthony Joshua could pivot and fight Francis Ngannou, fight not for a title, and it'll still draw a lot of people, right? Saudi Arabia will want that fight because it's Anthony Joshua, and Joshua, of course, picks up the win and gets the big payday while not being told who to fight. Understand that Ryan Garcia is in that position. We could argue about it. We can say, oh, Ryan doesn't have a belt and stuff like that. Folks, understand the Garcia crowd is committed. He's popular for whatever reason. We're following him. You have dignitaries in the sport. Hall of Famer, Buddy McGirt, talking about how this fight shouldn't have happened. The point is we're all paying attention to him. Right, He has box office power that the champion, Devin Haney, does not have. Understand how much money is involved here. Ryan Garcia comes in three pounds overweight. The kind of excess that many opponents would walk away from. Here, he's able to pay Devin Haney $1.5 million. That's half a mil for every pound he's overweight. And Haney realizing that he's looking at one of the big paydays of his career. Even though Haney has the belt, Haney takes the $1.5 million, right? So understand, Ryan Garcia, who's only lost once, and that's to Gavante Davis, right? In a fight where Garcia agreed to a weight restriction, right? Fighting at 136 convinced Garcia not to lose the last three pounds, which might have led to a different outcome in the fight, right? Let's just think this through. Understand, Ryan Garcia, at a certain point, gets to set his own rules, just like Canelo does, right? You have people like Kovalev running around saying, hey, I gave away too much in the negotiations. Just like Anthony Joshua does, right? These are the guys 
who bring the fans. Now, Devin Haney needs to figure all of this out because, in my opinion, he should not take the rematch, at least not now, with Ryan Garcia, right? He simply shouldn't. It's a bad math fight for him. Let's talk about the math. I thought Ryan Garcia won the fight. What I want people to do is to pull up the CompuBox numbers on this fight. And I want people to realize what happened here. Devin Haney, over 12 rounds, lands 87 punches. Right? 87. Understand, 42 of those punches were jabs, according to CompuBox. Right? 42 jabs landed. 87 punches total landed. Now, he's fighting Ryan Garcia. Garcia, according to CompuBox, landed 106 punches. 106. 11. You heard right. 12-round fight. 11 of Garcia's punches landed were jabs. Only 11. So what that means, let's do the math. On the Haney side of the play, 87 minus 42 is 45 power punches from Devin Haney. 45. By contrast, 106 minus 11 tells us that Ryan Garcia landed 95 power punches over the 12-round fight. 95 to Devin Haney's 45. Right, folks, there's a power discrepancy. This isn't the kind of fight where you say, okay, in the rematch, hey, just double up on the jab a little bit more or just throw a few more power shots. No, Haney would need a complete overhaul. Understand, too, in this fight, he gets knocked down three times. You and I know he's actually knocked down more than three times. Right now, I'm sore. I'm bitter. I lost on this fight. Right? For me to win, I needed a stoppage. I had the prop that the fight would not go the distance. Right? I needed a stoppage. Let me just say, in the seventh round, and that's really a key round in this fight. You know, if Ryan Garcia doesn't foolishly punch Devin Haney on a break after knocking him down, I believe the fight ends in the seventh round. Haney's legs are completely gone. Ryan Garcia makes some mistakes in that seventh round. After he knocks down Devin Haney, on a nice left hook, right? Haney gets up. Haney's legs are gone. Why was Haney able to grab Ryan Garcia, right? Garcia needs to look at that round. He needs to sit down with his trainer, Derek James, and James needs to tell him, look, when you have a guy badly hurt, and Haney is badly hurt in that seventh round, and his legs are gone. You've got to do things to make sure he's unable to clinch you. Right, Garcia is sticking his left hand out at times during this fight. He doesn't throw a jab. He just sticks his left hand out. The time to stick that left hand out to make sure you have spacing between you and the other guy is when the other guy is badly hurt and is trying to clinch you. Right? Instead, Garcia allows himself to get clinched. He loses valuable time on a guy who is so out of it that Haney hits the canvas a couple more times, believe it or not, in that seventh round. Harvey Doc waves it off, right? But understand, Haney's finished. So what Ryan should have been doing is 
as Haney comes in to clinch him, Ryan either should have figured out how to have an arm bar to at least have something between himself and Haney, or he should have been throwing flurries on Haney's head, making it busy in the pocket, too busy for Haney to then take the extra step to clinch him. Right, folks, Haney was being propped up in that round by Ryan Garcia. Right, when Haney comes in and he needs someone to clinch, Ryan Garcia is there to get clinched. Right, Haney, his legs are so gone, Haney can't even stand up. Haney comes over, he's, you know, he's dragging his legs. Right, he's falling down when Ryan Garcia moves backwards. Why isn't Garcia? knowing that Haney's going to try to clinch him, taking a step back or to the side and throwing punches. Because understand, if as Haney goes to clinch him, Haney gets hit with shots and hits the canvas, that would be a knockdown. The ref would have discretion to look at Haney after he gets off the canvas and to wave off the fight. Right, one of the problems with this fight is that Ryan Garcia is smothering his best work. In other words, he goes over to Haney, he hits Haney with a great shot. Haney then decides to clinch, and rather than move away, Ryan Garcia keeps moving forward so Haney can clinch him. Right, so I want people to revisit that seventh round. Sure, the fight has three official knockdowns. Understand there are two times in that seventh round where Haney hits the canvas. Haney's that out of it. Right? Why is Ryan Garcia allowing Haney to clinch him? And why is Ryan Garcia doing dumb things like hitting on the break? That allows the ref to then take a point away from him. And of course, gives Haney more time. Let's also look at Ryan Garcia. Just food for thought. You heard me mention Buddy McGirt's criticism earlier. I want people to realize Garcia going into this fight had only lost once, and that's to Gervonta Davis in a weight-drained fight. Right? He couldn't make 140 here. For Davis, he makes 136. Right? I need for folks to look hard at Ryan Garcia. Folks, this is a professional let me name three of the best trainers in the sport, right? Eddie Reynoso, Joe Goosen, Derek James. Folks, Ryan Garcia has worked with each of them. Understand, Garcia is 100% correct. He made so much money off that Gervonta Davis fight that he really doesn't have to continue on in his career. In other words, Boxing has already been financially successful for him. So in interviews, Garcia is saying, look, you know, I'm doing this because I enjoy it. This is a guy in his mid-20s, right, who is financially set for life if he handles his money right, right? Lord knows, you and I have heard of countless names. Bernie Madoff, for example, who made a lot of money, lost a lot of money, right? If Ryan Garcia treats his money right, it'll treat him right. And he doesn't have to fight again. So this is a guy who is continuing on. And he has picked Derek James as his trainer because he wants to be his best. Now it's still a work in progress. Understand, you saw the Kubrat Pulev-Anthony Joshua fight. You know you cannot turn your back on your opponent. Right? Understand, Ryan's still working out defense. He seems to be channeling Floyd Mayweather. But Mayweather always kept his eyes on you. Right? When Mayweather had a Philly shell, Mayweather's looking at you. Right? If you slip up, Mayweather's throwing that left hook. Ryan Garcia, by contrast, is turning his back on an opponent and he's looking the other way. Right? He'll have to clean that up. Understand, he's a work in progress, but he's a serious work in progress. 
He had a clear hand speed advantage here. This is power. This is speed. Right? Devin Haney could not handle the suddenness of Ryan Garcia's left hook. There's another punch. Ryan Garcia would get inside on Haney and he would throw a chopping right hand. And that right hand landed from time to time. Right? Garcia has a second hand. Right? I'm just telling you too, if you study Garcia, you'll see fights where he's taking out guys with right-handed uppercuts. You didn't really see that here in this fight. But understand, there's more to Garcia than meets the eye. Right? This is a guy who's immensely talented. Understand, again, against Devin Haney, master boxer, you have Ryan Garcia landing 50 more power punches. You have him landing more than twice the number of power shots as Devin Haney. Right, so if I'm Haney, I don't care if the contract has a rematch clause. I'm leaving the ring with my title. Right, I can fight whoever I want, you know, make title defenses against whomever. I'm still the champion. Right, plus I made $1.5 million extra. Who knows what the total purse was? But because Garcia missed weight, I got enriched. Right, if I'm Haney's father, though, I'm privately telling him. When the cameras are off and no one's around, no press is in the room. I'm telling him, hey, player, these CompuBox numbers don't add up for you. This guy lands many more power shots than you. He's faster than you in terms of hand speed. He hits harder than you. Right? Being a power puncher like this isn't your game. Your game is being a master boxer. It's not slugging with this guy. We can't stitch together a strategy for a rematch that's going to have you look appreciably better than you look tonight. Right? Understand, Brian Garcia never hits the canvas. Let me point out too, and more boxers should do this. The first round was magnificent. The first minute and a half of that first round. Ryan Garcia comes out. There are many people in the crowd who, you know, felt that he's too crazy for this opportunity. That the fight's going to be uncompetitive. They didn't know what to expect from the Ryan Garcia side of the aisle. And Garcia comes out and immediately starts throwing smoke at Devin Haney. That first minute and a half, Garcia lands several big shots. Understand how fast he is. Devin Haney hits him. And Garcia has a counter ready. It's his left hook. He lands the left hook. Devin Haney takes steps backwards. Haney is staggered. This is early in the fight. It sets the tone. The people in the arena understood. Ryan Garcia is ready for this fight. Ryan Garcia has come to win. Folks, they understood that 90 seconds into the fight. It set the tone. Garcia literally is teaching the crowd what to look for. Let me also say, too, the flaws make the diamond, right? Ryan Garcia is a little bit of an illusion, right? Fast hands, power in both hands, right? I'm telling you that chopping right had some sting on it. Obviously, the left hook, which knocks Haney down multiple times in this fight, is the A-plus punch. But Garcia has other punches, Right now, I believe you look at Garcia and he 
looks like he's standing too upright. This isn't a guy who bends to hide his body. His body looks like it's there to be hit. He looks wooden. Right? The problem is you have to deal with the suddenness of his offense. As you go to his body, his lead hand, that left, that left hook, is geared to knock you down. It takes a bit to figure out when to move in on Garcia. Right? It's an illusion. In other words, you see him, he looks too upright. You think, oh, great, I can just come in at different angles and throw punches. And then you realize that he can turn and quickly get off shots before you can put up your defense. Let me say this, too. I think Haney made a mistake here. Haney has great legs. What is he doing using them on his front foot against a guy who doesn't quite know how to marry movement to what he's doing. Don't get me wrong. There are times where Ryan Garcia is moving laterally and stuff like that. But when Ryan is moving, he doesn't throw punches that well. Devin Haney can move and throw punches at the same time. But here, I think the first round shook Haney. So Haney then gets on his front foot in rounds two, three, and four to reestablish the fact that he's the guy who should win the slow rounds, right? The problem, though, is Haney's too much in the pocket against a slugger, right? What's Haney doing? He's fought Ryan Garcia six times in the amateur. He has to know that Ryan Garcia is a puncher. I believe he plays into Garcia's hands because in that seventh round, Garcia knew exactly where to find him. Haney's getting so beaten up, his legs are so gone in the seventh round, that I had my phone on X, and I had Regis Progray. I don't know Progray, but I follow him on X, the former Twitter. And Progre actually tweeted, Devin is hurt, right, on the telecast. Sergio Mora actually said, hey, you know what, Haney needs to take a knee. This is in a round where Haney had already been knocked down, right? Haney was so bad off that the announcers, right, Mora, former champion, thought that Haney should take a knee. Haney falls to the canvas. There was a lot of wrestling in this fight. Harvey Doc had a judgment call to make. He called two slips in that seventh round. Right now, just to understand how bad it was for Haney. Haney survives the seventh round with one official knockdown. He gets knocked down two more times in the fight. Right, folks? You know, Sade put it best. It's never as good as the first time. If I'm Devin Haney, I don't know how the second half of the fight would encourage me to want to fight this guy again. Right? I have my title. It's at 140. This guy couldn't make 140 for this fight. Right? What fight, uh, what weight's the rematch going to be? If I'm Haney, I pivot here. And I say, hey, okay, Ryan, we're contemporaries. Both guys are in their mid-20s. We'll do this again sometime down, sometime down the road. Right? But if I'm Haney, I realize, gee, if this guy landed 50 more power shots than me, knocked me down three times more than I knocked him down, if I was so bad off in that seventh round that the guys on the zone thought I should take a knee, and as it was, I fell to the canvas two times, unofficially, that weren't counted as knockdowns. I would realize that 
I need to work on some things before I fight Ryan Garcia again. Right? Let me um, also say, too, that what Haney thinks would have been academic if Ryan Garcia didn't foolishly hit him on the break and get a point deducted in the very seventh round I'm talking about. Right? Ryan needs to keep his head. He needs to realize that job one is to win the fight. You have the champ reeling so badly that folks are thinking he should take a knee after getting knocked down. Close the show. Right? Finish him off. Forget about the crowd. Don't look at the crowd the rest of the round. Look at the crowd after the count hits 10. Great performance by uh, Garcia. Um, let's just say I'm looking forward to what he does next. There are many people I'd like to see him against. Right? I would say the uh, Goliath at 147, particularly now that Crawford is about to fight at 154, is Boots Ennis. Right? Um, let's just say Boots Ennis marries power with movement. Right? Boots Ennis hits a lot harder than Devin Haney. You know, if I'm Haney too, I really have to figure out what exactly I'm doing here. Right? Because even though Haney gains a lot of weight between fights, even though Haney is a physically big guy, he's not a puncher. One of the most telling interviews, and look it up, was Jorge Linares who fought Devin Haney. And Jorge is talking about in the fight thinking that Haney wasn't a puncher. You know, Linares actually thought, and they fought at 135, that by moving up to 140, Haney was going to perhaps gain some power on his punches. He thought maybe Haney was a little weight drained at 135 and at 140 he would hit a lot harder. Folks, I'm just telling you, it looked here like one guy had a sledgehammer and the other guy had a regular hammer. You notice the difference in punching power, right? Also, what I want people to consider, what Haney needs to consider, is the fact that when he fought Lomachenko, he got hit with many shots the second half of that fight. Right here, look at the combi box numbers. Folks, they're not encouraging. Garcia is landing too high a percentage, over 40% of his power shots. Right? You cannot let a puncher land as high a percentage of power shots as Devin Haney let Ryan Garcia land. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I lost on this fight. Um, you know, three knockdowns weren't enough. I needed a stoppage. I didn't need knockdowns. I needed a stoppage, right? And did not get it, right? Um, you know, I should have put at least some on the uh, Ryan Garcia simply to win side of the play. Uh, but hindsight's 100%, right? I would have gotten leverage. I did notice that at the time I made my pre-fight video here, um, you were getting better than a plus 600 on Ryan Garcia. By the time they entered the ring, this is after Garcia misses weight by three pounds and has a beer. Right? When you're the box office king, you can do things like that. Right? Provided that you're willing to pay for the, um, you know, excess weight. Um, even after that, believe it or not, the line dropped to a minus 450 when they entered the ring. Right? So the point is a lot of late money came in on Ryan Garcia after really some of the worst press a fighter could get, right? People, you know, saying he needs an evaluation <laughs> and stuff like that, right? Teddy Atlas, uh, you know, Buddy McGirt, 
These are boxing insiders, and they were skeptical on whether Ryan Garcia could even put up a competitive fight. It's at moments like that that gamblers need to take advantage, right? I wish I were smarter than just taking the fight doesn't go the distance prop. Anyway, those are uh, my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.